you've already heard, over 90 published peer-reviewed medical studies on sports fitness, metabolic health, obesity, and diabetes. There's a reason, as I said earlier, that some of the most prominent high-profile people on the planet have started to align themselves with Kimono. When they look into Don's research, they realize that this is the place that they want to be. Please give a big round of applause to the, the father of metabolism, number one doctor in metabolic health, Dr. Donald Lane. It's important that you sort of understand the systems and understand the products, you understand the, the business, but uh, I want to give you some of the thoughts about the science that underpins it. Uh, this may be a level that sort of, as we continue, we've been working at this for two and a half years, and each year we kind of unfold the petals a little bit more and help people understand what the science is that really is the foundation behind all of this. And, and so this is going to have a little bit more of a technical science behind it. Uh, Craig always tells me he that for a layman. I sound a lot like a professor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll try and say the layman version, too. <laughs> Kimana is about systems. You've been hearing so far this morning about the business opportunities. It's an unparalleled business opportunity. And that, you know, may be the primary interest for a lot of you. But one of the other aspects is it's an unparalleled health opportunity, too. And hopefully there are a lot of you here that got into it because of the health aspect. I'm involved with the science. These are exceptional products. And basically what Kibana does, it gives you an opportunity to change your lifestyle from a business financial standpoint, but it gives you the opportunity to also change your health. Or the health of the people around you, the stories, the testimonials that you're hearing. There's some incredible stories out there. It, you can change the life of people around you, people you love, or even your own. So Kimon is really unique in that regard. It gives you both of those opportunities, and you can sort of focus on either one. One of the things that we want to emphasize is that Kimon is really about systems. There's a lot of groups out there that have big catalogs. You know, you go out and find a catalog of 400 products or something, I'm a professor of nutrition. I've been at this at the University of Illinois for 35 years, and I can't figure out what I take out of those catalogs. What we've done is provide a simple concept of systems. These are complete and simple systems that really provide a foundation for your life. We're giving you a blueprint to sort of give you the help that you want. These aren't medical drugs or anything. These aren't things that are going to be magic potions. Basically, we're giving you the foundation that you can make your life. We're giving you the tools that you can be successful with. These are complete natural healthy products. We're using the absolute best products and ingredients we can lay our hands on from anywhere around the world. And they're, based, and they're scientifically developed. Most companies go out there and at best they might consult with somebody. For the most part, all of our science is developed in-house. I did it. I know what's there because I actually did the science. A lot of companies go out there and just Google things. So go out there and say, well, that's good, that's cheap, and I'll put together six or eight different products. We call that by salads. <laughs> Ours is based on science that we did. We're not guessing. We didn't Google science. We did it. <laughs> Metabolic, again, is a foundation for good health. It's basically a system that gives you that baseline. We've developed the first aspect of it, 
relative to weight loss, the metabolic for weight loss system, because two-thirds, almost 75% of the people in the United States are overweight or obese. It's a critical need we've got to address. We're moving into adult health. As you lose weight, as we all have an aging society, uh, we basically need that foundation to allow us to get to those golden years, to actually have that health we want. So we're moving into the adult health arena. And we're slowly opening up into the athletic area. A lot of the metabolic science that you're going to hear about, we actually discovered working with athletes. My research was about muscle health and athletic performance. And basically, our research all came out of the athletic area. Uh, so these are some where we're at and where we're going. Uh, my, my book, the, uh, the Metabolic Lifestyle, actually the second edition is about to come out. We've approved it. It's in printing now. It should be available within about a month. And there's brand new chapters about adult health and athletic performance. So again, it's a foundation. This is where the information comes from. What I'm going to do today, though, is talk about some of the discoveries. They finally decided to let me talk about some of the real science that underpins it. So this is my cross between the professor part and the layman part. But there are some incredible discoveries that underpin why this works. Again, it's not Google science, it's what I discovered. So I'm going to talk about those six discoveries. Some of it will be a little scientific. I promise there's no quiz at the end. You don't have to you know, pass a quiz to get in. While it's based on unique science, though, what's really incredible about it is we spent a decade developing how to teach it. So while it's incredible science, we also have very simple concepts that you can take out as IBOs and help people understand. Two very simple goals as you use metabolic is one is it's about protein. It's about high quality protein, and it's about high quality protein in each meal, 30 grams each meal. We'll go back to that point as we go along. A second aspect of it, it's about a ratio of carbohydrate to protein. How much carbohydrate can you eat in your daily diet? <coughs> how much do you have related to how much protein you're getting? Two very simple concepts. And to make that work, we've actually gone ahead and created products. A lot of people will go out and argue that their products are magical. Those aren't magical. They're scientifically based. They're foundations. They're not magic bullets or magic juices. These are products that work because the science makes them work. These temple goals are based around the concept of a plate look, which is very easy to implement in your life. It's a concept around your meal. Anytime you eat, you think first about protein. You position carbohydrates with it in a proportion, and that's where these amounts of protein and amounts of carbs come from. We developed a total meal replacement in a shake. We took not only all the guesswork out, we made it convenient. A wonderfully tasting shake. How many have tried the shake? A wonderfully tasting high quality. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. Sounds a lot better. I'll talk different. Complete metabolic shake. Uh, it is a complete shake. It's a, it's a perfect blend of proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. Total meal replacement. We have, a, which is great for starting breakfast correctly, or or any meal actually. The bar, something that you can take on the, the road as part of uh, snacks, etc. We made the products to make life convenient, make it easy to do, and they're perfect metabolic products. Okay, so now I want to talk about some of the discoveries that we have that really underpins this science. The first one is really the discovery of leucine. Leucine is one of the essential amino acids that I actually didn't discover it. That was done in the 40s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the essential amino acids were done in the 40s. But what I did discover was the metabolic signal that we get from leucine. We discovered the role of this amino acid, and particularly in muscle. The metabolic correction we talk about is based on what happens in your muscles. So we discovered that. I like to show this picture. Craig cringes when I do it, but uh, again, no quiz later. Basically, this molecule called leucine affects a protein that's actually an enzyme inside of your muscle cells. Uh, scientists love acronyms. We call it mTOR. 
because we don't like to pronounce all the other letters. Uh, <laughs> mTOR is an enzyme that actually triggers a whole series of processes that cause protein synthesis. Interacts with uh, hormones like insulin. <laughs> the older we get, the more important this thing will become. When you're a child, you're driven primarily by the hormone side. But after you stop growing, you become much more sensitive to the protein side of this. And the health of your muscles is totally dependent on how much and when you eat protein. So that's the issue, short to your large scale. <laughs> Basically, what we discovered was how this process, this leucine, interacts with hundreds of other molecules to make this process start. It's an absolute trigger. And we have published over 40 peer-reviewed papers just on the topic of leucine. We are the world leader. My laboratory is the world's leader in understanding how this amino acid works in making health of muscle correct. Secondly, a trigger for protein synthesis, then we had to figure out how it fit in the diet. And once we knew that leucine was the trigger, we understood how much leucine it took. And based on that, we then could determine how much protein you have. And so what we determined was basically there's a meal threshold for protein. At every pro meal you sit down to eat protein, if you don't reach that threshold, the protein in the meal becomes meaningless. <laughs> and we discovered that. We published this 2009, it was one of our first publications. This was ahead of the last dietary guidelines. Just about a month ago, the American Dietetics Association, a national publication from them, came out and said for adult health, all adults should be 25 to 30 grams of protein per, per meal. They got it from us. <laughs> what we found was if we looked at the diet of Americans, we now know that it takes about 30 grams of protein to trigger protein synthesis. And that in the range from about 30 to 55 grams at the meal, it's, it's effective. The average American has 10 grams in their special paid breakfast in the morning. It becomes absolutely meaningless. It is nothing but extra calories. If I was going to design it at breakfast to uh, make you obese or maybe give you diabetes, I'd put together special pay with a banana and orange juice. <laughs> Anybody have that? <laughs> For about 30 years, and what did you get you? <laughs> How's that working out? Uh, basically, most Americans at lunch have less than 20. And most Americans at dinner time, after 7 o'clock at night, eat over 65% of their protein. So what we have is a total misdistribution. It's an unbalanced. We eat too much at dinner and not nearly enough at breakfast and lunch. So what we have done is gone to a balanced distribution, and you're going to see more and more of this about in the press. The next dietary guidelines are 2015. You're going to see more and more of this. We're just about five years ahead of the curve. And so what we have done is created a system and products to allow that to be convenient. When you do that, you correct your metabolism, you correct your body composition, and you lose the weight you want. A third discovery. As I said at the beginning, when we discovered all of this, we were working on exercise. And so we know not as much about protein synthesis and athletic performance and muscle development as anybody anywhere. Although, if you go into the GNCs and you look for things on their shelf, you're going to see the words leucine and branched chain amino acids. You follow back where they got that research, they got it from me. <laughs> So we published extensively in the exercise area also. What we now know about exercise is that, again, so meals are important, but one of the key times is when you go out and do your workout, when you do your exercise, when you do your practice, when you have your performance, whatever it is, for about two hours after, well, during that exercise, your muscle actually begins to break down itself. That's actually what training is. When you train to do a new athletic event, you go through the exercise and you break down your muscles for a while and then you have to build them back up. It's that repair and remodeling that allows you to get stronger. It allows people to recover from illnesses. But what we found out is that after an exercise or a workout, you have about two hours 
If you don't take in the right protein in the two hours after that exercise, you lose at least 50% of having done it. You'll get the exercise expenditure of calories. You'll still burn calories if you walk a mile, you burned 100 calories. That's still there. But the actual metabolic correction, the development of your muscles, the development of your mitochondria, you'll lose 50% of the effect of doing it. What we have found is that what individuals need to do, though, is they have to take protein right afterwards. And that was actually the original development of the bar. The bar was first developed as a post-exercise recovery bar for athletes. It's great for a snack for weight loss. It's great for adults. It's great for use for kids. It was developed for athletes. And what we discovered was that when you do exercise, it actually lowers that threshold. Remember when I mentioned that a meal was 30 grams? If you've just done exercise in the next two hours, it only takes 15. And so we've developed the 15 gram, the bar, plus the additional amino acids in it. There is nothing like that bar in the market. You can go to any health food store, you can go to any athletic place in the country, in the world, and you'll never find a bar that's equal to that one. Okay? It has no peers. Basically, it's an ideal blend of protein and amino acids. It gives you that immediate recovery, it will maximize muscle development, it will maximize any exercise that you do, work, workout or whatever, it will maximize the effort. Fourth discovery, while we were working on protein, especially working for weight loss, if you put protein into the diet, diet you need to take something else out. You can't just add it on, it's called calories, okay? <laughs> I hear sometimes people will come out and they'll say, I've been doing metabolic now for six months and I haven't lost any weight. What are you doing? Well, I'm taking two shakes a day. Where do you use them? Well, I take them with my other meals. <laughs> oh, that's not the point. Okay. It's not a magic potion. They're a lifestyle. They're a substance. They're a complete meal replacement. You have to get all the meals correct. <laughs> While we were doing it, we understood, though, it made a difference in carbohydrates. Average American eats 350 grams of carbohydrates per day. Your daily requirement's 120. The average American's eating three times more carbohydrates than they need. Carbohydrates are what make you fat. You've heard fat makes you fat. Actually, it's not true. Carbohydrates make you fat, and they make you eat more fat. <laughs> carbohydrates make you fat. Carbohydrates also mess with your blood glute sugar and your insulin, and this is the origins of a lot of the diseases you hear about. They cause inflammation. Most of the adult-related diseases, heart disease, diabetes, a lot of things you hear about, cancers, are originate with inflammation. The number one cause of inflammation in the American diet is insulin, carbohydrates. It leads to fat storage. It's why that middle part develops as we get older. Insulin targets fat around your belly. Vascular changes, heart disease, blood pressure, abnormal lipids. That's the origin. The high blood lipids that you have, high triglycerides, low good cholesterol, HDL, that's caused by carbohydrates. It has nothing to do with fat at all. And about the correction, what we have also learned, not only do you need to control carb uh, protein at around 30 grams, you need to control carbohydrates at about 40 grams. Average Americans eating that special paid breakfast I just described has 80 grams of carbohydrate in it. 40 is the max without making insulin go crazy. Okay? So we have a relationship to how many carbs in the threshold. One of the things that makes carbs confusing is that not everybody's the same. If you're an athlete, highly physically active, then you can eat some more carbohydrates. So 40 is about that starting point. Okay. If you're a highly active uh, uh, athlete, you might be able to get along with 50 or 60, okay? Children, because of their high hormone and, and physical activity, can usually eat more carbohydrates. The larger your body size, men can usually eat more carbohydrates than women because they have more muscle mass to burn them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Increasing age. 
decreases carbohydrate need. In fact, high carbohydrate diets as you get older actually inhibit that same protein synthesis we're trying to start in your muscles. They actually make it worse. So if you think about that, somebody who chooses to be sedentary around 55, 60 years of age, female, is probably the worst case you can come up with. We call that menopause. <laughs> Why do we get fat around the middle? And why do we have our hormone change? Why do we get those metabolic abnormalities? You're fighting a battle here. If you don't get the carbohydrates right, it's not a battle you can win. Metabolic corrects that. Last two discoveries relate to some sort of brand new research that we've done. Uh, and you're going to see these evolving the products over the next few years. That uh, protein burns fat. We've known that sort of from ancient times. You look back at ancient athletes and what did they do? They consumed meats, proteins, made you strong and lean, low fat. It burns fat. We call that thermogenesis, burning of, of calories. The traditional, the traditional thought about what that caused, or what it was the cause of it, was that protein is difficult to handle. You'll hear people say, well, protein burns more calories because it's hard to handle. You burn more energy uh, because it's hard to digest and absorb and all that kind of thing. That's nonsense. If that was true, if you went out and ate a 30 gram protein meal and you ate a 60 gram, you would get twice the effect and it never works. The reason you get because of protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is a very energy demanding process. So again, I like pictures. Uh, basically, as we're making a new protein in the cell, we go through a series of steps. First, you start in the trigger, which is actually the leucine part. And then we go through what's called elongation. We make the, the, uh, the protein chain longer. That is very energy expensive. Incredibly expensive, burns lots of calories. So every meal that we trigger, this protein metabolism, this metabolic correction, you burn more energy. You need high energy fuel, so you're burning fat, and the place we get it is our most metabolically active fat is around your midsection. One of the reasons we say don't pay as much attention or, or pay partial attention to your bathroom scale, be sure you're making measurements, because what you're going to see is dramatic changes in how your clothes fit. Mm -hmm. We're changing your body composition. Sort of the new real discovery underpinning all of that is what we've now discovered is leucine has a very specific role in mitochondria. So what are mitochondria? They're like the little engine in your body. So if you think about this as like a gas, like the engine in your car. Your car takes gasoline as the fuel, <coughs> runs it in the engine, ignites it, it produces hot air, drives the piston, and you, and you walk, right? In your body, basically, these mitochondria, they take fats, they take fats in your body, and they basically will burn them in the mitochondria, and they produce the hot air, the gas, basically is called ATP. What a great acronym, right? So basically, it's the fuel of your body, and basically, that makes your body run. Okay. What we discovered is this leucine molecule, it triggers that mTOR, which triggers protein synthesis, and that's what we're trying to do. That's part of our metabolic correction. Burns energy, uses glucose. But what we also have in the body is an energy sensor, called another enzyme, another protein called antikinase. Ignore the, ignore the acronyms, right? This is like, your, this is like the uh, fuel gauge on your car. It's an energy sensor. So when you're going along in your, in your car and your fuel gauge reads empty, you know, you run into the gas station. If you run out of gas, you walk home, right? If you're running along and you burn up all your energy and your muscle, your muscles can no longer hold you, you fall over. We call it rigor mortis. <laughs> and so it's very important that we have an energy gauge. It's called antikinase. It's an energy sensor. It triggers yet another molecule totally irrelevant to you, called PGC1-alpha, 
and that actually causes us to expand mitochondria. We actually will increase their activity, their size, and the number of them in the cell. This is that metabolic correction. It's a direct effect of leucine in causing protein synthesis to stimulate them. This is an amazing discovery, and we're going to have some pretty cool products that are coming along the pipeline that we're going to be using. But this is an amazing discovery that allows your body to burn more energy. What we now know is that actually the metabolic effect, we have done this, and we've done it in various animals where you can kind of do this kind of science, but we now know that our metabolic breakfast is equivalent to an hour of intense running. It burns as much energy, it has more impact on ATP and fat burning than an hour of energy, which is easier to do, an hour of running or drinking a metabolic shake. <laughs> so pretty cool. Okay, one of the other things that I want to do though is tie these systems back together. We talk about them being systems, metabolic is a great system that underpins your metabolism. But it ties together with our prime and core systems, amazing. These are not accidental things. These are things we've designed and had to do. So when we talk about prime, it's a nitric oxide. As you get older, your ability to make nitric oxide, one of a primary, synth, uh, primary molecule that helps you with blood pressure, it helps with bite, vasodilation. So that's kind of a one minute message. When you go out, what does prime do? Well, it helps with blood pressure, it helps uh, with basal dilation and make circulation better. Uh, Craig's got some slides, I think, later. We've done some thermal imaging of individuals, and basically before and after prime, you can do a thermal image and you can see how the circulation based on body heat, you can see there's hot and cold spots. You take prime and it changes the circulation totally. It makes the circulation totally uniform. It's an amazing effect. So it, it enhances blood flow, it reduces blood pressure, cardiovascular, Improves blood carbohydrate uptake, glucose blood sugar uptake. Remember, that's part of what metabolics do, controlling blood sugar. They're related. And it helps with mitochondrial biogenesis. I'm going to come back to that in a second. But you think about it. What are the, what are the purposes of, uh, of, of the metabolic? Well, we're trying to get leucine delivered to tissues, to cells. How do you do that? Change your blood flow. Prime makes that work. Prime itself helps with glucose uptake and helps with the mitochondria. Let me show you that picture again. So here's this leucine, AMP kinase, PGC1 alpha, mitochondrial biogenesis. Well, it intersects with nitric oxide at the same point. They work together to build a foundation to make your body metabolically correct the situation. They're building on each other. Produces energy, burns fat. Core, our other main system. Core is a prebiotic, second to none, incredible probiotic to help with gut health. And the essentials, the essentials, uh, three different herbs help with uh, glucose uptake, anti-inflammation, energy metabolism. Again, you see the synergy. What is, what is the most important part of getting metabolic into the system? How does prime work? They all work in the gut. If we don't get the protein digested and incorrectly, it doesn't work. We have the probiotic. How does the nitric oxide prime work? Well, it works with your saliva and it produces a nitrate that we then absorb. If it doesn't work correctly with the right bacteria, then we don't get it absorbed. We've got the probiotic to work together and make it optimal. It's also essentials help with glucose uptake. Again, that's what we're trying to do, stabilize insulin and glucose. So overall, what we've got is metabolic correction, but what we've got are three simple systems that work together. They're synergistic. They're better together than they are individual. The, the total is better than the sum of the individual products. Together, they create this new foundation for health. They are the blueprint for your life. They defend against metabolic instability. One of the things we know is that if you go through the day and you say, geez, I'm tired all afternoon, or I fall asleep, or I'm emotionally up and down, one of the, re one of the things we've always used to know people are following metabolic is you don't hear those things. If they're, if they're stable, you won't hear those kinds of comments. If, they're not, if you don't hear those comments, you know they're not following the program. 
They help you generate energy. Not only do they burn fat, but they just make you feel better. Protect your muscles against disability. The major one cause of uh, people dying and failing in older age has to do with lack of mobility. It's not heart disease, it's not cancer, it's falls and breaks and going to the hospital, getting infections. Disability is the, pro is the major problem associated with aging. And then again, and all of these help to uh, increase your immunity, help you defend against uh, infections and things like that. They help you to defend against the environment around you. So basically, there's some of the science that underpins it. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, gee, how will I ever remember all that? It's not important. It's important that what you know is this is the science that underpins it. You'll learn your one mind. Man, but just go try it. Our products are so important. You know, what you'll find out is if just people try it for a week, they'll find out the, the success of it. They work. And so you don't have to know that you don't have to be able to say the same things I do. You don't have to be, you don't have to duplicate me. You just have to know that we walk with you. So with that, I thank you and uh, appreciate you.